Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alex. If you are here for Vlogtober, hello. And if you're just stopping in at a random time of year or just to watch my videos, welcome. So I'm actually going to do my entire to be read physical because I'm not gonna go through my eBooks, but if you ever want me to, let me know in the comments. But I'm not gonna include the ones I just did in the book haul. You can find that on my channel. I did it like a couple days ago. But these are books that have been on my bookshelf that most of them I've started to read, but I've abandoned because my reading brain has been corrupted, but we are fixing that. So let's go through and yeah, let's see what's on my bookshelf. Man Search for Meaning, you might have heard about this book and if you haven't, you really should check it out. So Man Search for Meaning has riveted generations of readers with its descriptions of life in Nazi death camps and its lessons for spiritual survival. A psychiatrist, Viktor Frankl, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, um, who labored in four different camps, including Auschwitz. It talks about finding the meaning of life after being through incredible suffering that, you know, I personally will never be able to understand. But I think that's what makes me want to read this book so much, is the words that are written are obviously so powerful. So I did start it. Um, I had to put it down. It's a hard read. It's still really heavy, and I don't think I'm there yet. So I think you know, I'm definitely gonna read this book. I just have to get to a good place to start. So I got this book at Eddie's Bookstore, the Feathertail Review 19. I think it's like a mini magazine. I don't really know how to describe it. This issue includes exactly two get-rich-quick schemes, a rhinoceros having a time in Atlantic Canada, an obituary for someone you don't care about and won't miss. I can't say that one out loud. I don't think I can say that one out loud. So it's a little bit inappropriate, but I think in like a good way. I don't think it's like, you know, bad. Um, so yeah, I'll be, I'll let you know how this one turns out. This should be like a quick and easy read. So this kind of just needs to be a fun read that I schedule in really. The Book of Hope by Jane Goodall. So I have started this book, but I actually have started like four nature books. And I was like, okay, how about I just read one so I can really absorb what I'm learning because I am trying to do more note taking when I'm reading books, especially ones like this. So it's just been on hold for now, but Excellent, excellent book, excellent person. I got this book at a used bookstore, I think. Um, Darren Shan, Cirque du Freak, A Living Nightmare. So this is based on a true story. It's a saga. It says Darren Shan is just an ordinary schoolboy until he gets an invitation to visit the Cirque du Freak. So the reason I bought this is because I really like freak show episode of American Horror Story, so I'm hoping it has those vibes. This will probably be, I'll read this this month. It's a Halloween read, I need to, right? So The Lathe of Heaven, I bought this. I love the look of it. It was actually recommended by a friend. And it says, in a future world wracked by violence and environmental catastrophes, George Orr wakes up one day to discover that his dreams have the ability to alter reality. So it's like science fiction, kind of talks about like climate change, I think. Really, really good. But again, I have to be in the headspace to do science fiction because it's a little bit heavy with like the, you know, the tech and the science. So it's on the TBR, but I just don't know when. The Cure for Death by Lightning. So I just love the cover. I see this at a used bookstore. I had to get it. I did start reading it. It is a little slow. This book also takes place in the past. I find a lot of books about the past are a little bit too descriptive for my liking. Some people need to have their hand held through describing a setting. I like to just use my imagination and get to the point. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit slow. I don't know if this is gonna be a book I can finish, but I am interested in it, so I'll give it a try. So I have Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, you know, obviously this is like a very popular, famous book and my partner actually read it, which is why we have it. So I do plan on reading it. I just, again, it's not something like on the horizon yet, but I will read it. I will. All We Can Save, Truth, Courage, and Solutions for the Climate Crisis. This is a beautiful book. It's like essays, poems, conversations from people who deserve to be heard. I actually read like about a chapter or a, um, I don't know what the word is a chapter or a section a day. But this is one that's in my nature books because again, I wanna do note taking. So it's on pause until I finish The Secret Wisdom of Nature, which I'm currently reading. I have no hard feelings, which I really need to make a priority. So this one is going to be Alex, Editing Alex, 
priority. So this is about the secrets of embracing emotions at work. We've been taught for a really long time that like you should not have emotions at work. It's unprofessional or you know, except for anger. People are allowed to yell and swear and be like racist and homophobic and sexist. But anyway, um, so I really do want to read this because I have a really hard time with my emotions, especially being self-employed and even working with people. I'm just an emotional person. I have a hard time with my emotions. So I just think I can learn a lot from this. So on my priority list. So this one, Wild and Precious Life, I bought this during the lockdown and I think it actually references the lockdown in the book. I think it's like a really recent read. I did start reading it and I read some reviews about, I don't know, it's, I think the content of the book is good. I think it's about the topics covered and who they're co covered by is like the controversial point of it. The plot thickens. I bought this at a used bookstore. Eight ways to bring fiction to life. So got it. So I do want to be a writer one day and I don't know when that's going to be because I'm so busy but I need to make it a priority but obviously I'm going to save this until I'm like really getting into that writing zone. So maybe next year. A mind spread out on the ground. So this is a bold and profound meditation on trauma, legacy, oppression, and racism in North America. So this is about indigenous people in North America. This is a really good book. I need to read it. I need to make it a priority. So editing Alex, priority. It's about trauma from how indigenous people have been treated and how that has trickled down into the present times and what we can do for the future, which is such an important conversation you should know about indigenous peoples in your area you should and you should respect them you should be fighting for them you should be standing up for them you should be uplifting your, their voices always so i have rabbit a memoir by patricia williams miss pat so the reason i haven't read this i was i found her i was like man i want to read this but then i listened to her podcast so much i think i know a lot of what's in this book so i haven't been able to make it a priority because it doesn't seem new to me it doesn't seem like I really need to read it because I'm like, I probably know about this, but I really should read it because her story is, I don't know how to describe it, honestly, but I, I should read it. Pleasure activism, the politics of feeling good, drawing on the black feminist tradition, she challenges us to rethink the ground rules of activism. Her mind altering essays are interwoven with conversations and insights from other feminist thinkers. So I really need to read this. I try to be an activist. I try to be an ally. I try to do everything I can. I'm very much in the environmental space, even though I speak about other things, but I think I need to really learn from people of color who've, you know, I don't need to ask them how to be a better activist or ally. I can just consume their media that they've put out there for people like me to learn how to be. So this is, should be also be a priority. Alex, priority. The Future Earth. This is about a radical vision of what's possible in the age of warming. So I'm a climate science student <laughs> and I just want to read everything about climate change. I just need to find a little bit of hope while also being realistic. So this is a book that's good for that. I'm halfway through it, but again, one nature book at a time. The Timekeeper by Mitch Album. So Mitch Album wrote Tuesdays with Maury and that is one of my favorite books of all time. Like definitely top three, definitely top three. So I really need to read this. It's cute. It's about time. I love stuff like that. It should be a pretty easy read. I just haven't been able to read fiction lately, but you know, this will be coming up soon. Starting out in the afternoon, a midlife journey into wild land. This voyage of a middle-aged woman through Canada's wildest landscape is so well rendered that the reader longs to take the same journey. So I'm a big outdoors gal, I'm a big nature gal. I've said that a billion times in this video. So I just thought it'd be really cool to read and you know, maybe this is a book I'll write in the future, who knows. And the final book is We Are All The Same, the extraordinary story of Nikosi Johnson, the South African boy born with AIDS, whose stout-hearted insistence that every child's life is important brought great change to his country and made Nikosi, in Nelson Mandela's words, an icon of the struggle for life for millions of people in Africa and around the world. So again, this is a true story based on like real life, it is going to be a heavy read. These kind of reads, I just have to put the brakes on until I'm ready. I, it's, it's draining for me, but like, also not having to deal with this stuff in real life is a privilege. So like, the least I can do is read about it. It's kind of the thing I struggle with. So those are all my reads. I think most of them are nonfiction, but in my book haul I did recently, most of them are fiction. I think all of them are fiction, to be honest, except one, one is not fiction. Maybe you'll have a book to add to your collection and now you know what I have to get through until I can have another book haul. So pray for me. Bye.